just this month, 2017, Malacanang, through spokesperson Harry Roque, said that the NPA was to quote a spent force. And perhaps even more impressively, in March 2017, Edgardo Arevalo, chief of the AFP Public Affairs Office, said that the military considers the NPA a spent force compared to decades ago. So if the NPA has been characterized by the armed forces and by the palace as a spent force until as recently as early this month, why extend martial law using it as one of the key reasons? Mr. President, uh, as a former government peace panel negotiator, I know that martial law or any repression of civil liberties, such as the suspension of the writ of habeas corpus, actually spikes NPA recruitment. In fact, if we look back at history, in 1984, the military began its biggest offensive against the CPP-NPA. In 1985, just the following year, the NPA peaked its numbers with 30 to 45,000 members, and its acts of violence reached their height with 1,282 military and police deaths and 1,362 civilian deaths. So bearing this in mind, what exactly do you hope for martial law to achieve with respect to the CPP-NPA? The reason why they are uh, now part of the, uh, of the martial law, they are not actually the main target of the martial law, but still the continuing rebellion of the ISIS-inspired uh, groups in Mindanao is because they are uh, already uh, branded as a terrorist organization. And in fact, uh, because of that, they have also alerted or directed the troops on the ground to intensify attacks uh, on military troops. That's why uh, they are part of the martial law.